Hello everyone. Welcome to the NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. We are in week six, lecture four. In this week of lecture, we have seen how we could look at coordinate re reference system and projections to understand the conversion of a 2D map from a 3D map. We also saw that there are multiple methods to bring data into GIS, out of which one is georeferencing. Georeferencing is key because a lot of data are stored in the government archives. And we looked at certain websites where we could get data for free, especially the Survey of India, and we downloaded the data. In the last class, we successfully georeferenced a paper map which has been scanned and uploaded on the portal of Survey of India. We downloaded the data and put it in the QGIS software. Now, we were able to bring the map data and another data, which is Government of India's boundary data, and then see how these two data talk to each other. Now, as I promised, we will look into the extraction of features, extraction of data and information from these georeference map. So let's continue the work that we did in the last class. I hope you had time to uh, revisit this manual and look into the subheadings and how to do it. Uh, my tutorial um, through the NPTEL lecture can also be used for georeferencing. And then in the example, we found out that we can showcase, let me open that window also, that we can showcase the map in multiple ways, right? Okay, so new share. So let me share the window again. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen for the GIS. Yes, now it's visible. You could see that your map, we stopped here where we imported the Karnataka boundary through the Indian boundary, and we imported this map into the GIS software mm -hmm. and now georeferenced. Okay. So there are other things that we can do. The base layer doesn't help you to do it right now, but the base layer was kept so that we know that it is exactly in Karnataka location and the uh, location where Tumkur is there, the uh, Elanka Lake is there is, is correct. Now the second step is going to look at how we collect data from this or, or what kind of data can we collect from this. So to move on, we are going to extract data from maps. The three different types of data that we can readily extract are point shape files, line shape files, and polygon shape files. These are the three vector data. The data can also be converted to raster in a, in a later stage, but we will look into the vector shape files and visualizing on Google Earth Pro. So let's do one by one. Uh, I'm going to go back to my QGIS uh, map that we had initially worked on. Yes, the map is on now, right? On the top, the toolbar is mostly used for adding vector layer and raster layer. It is green in color, the plus sign. However, when you come to this, there is a yellow shape file. And that yellow shape file is what we are going to use in the today's lecture. Why? Because we want to see if we could extract data in different formats. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the um, zoom out and then see where we are. Okay, uh, and we are going to put this data uh, in the first thing that is points. Let's see what points that we can extract. And you could see here there are multiple features that we can extract. 
One is uh, huts, permanent uh, temporary towers, towns, villages, inhabited, desert, fort. Um, these are lines we were looking at points, uh, lighthouses, bo uh, boys, um, and then telegraph office, overhead tank. See, the overhead tank is good, but you don't see it many. Maybe the map has not been updated from 2011, uh, but we can definitely see post offices. So let's do post office because almost all villages uh, or, or location of villages together will have a post office. Okay, so let's look uh, very nearby what post office is there. Actually, you do have some blue dots and the blue dots refer to here. Wells lines, uh, so let's do wells. So wells is also good for rural data mapping. Um, and here we have a lot of wells. And then this is an overhead tank for the water supply, right? A triangle is given as uh, wells. Uh, so you have to read it like this, wells, lined, unlined. So these are the different lines and lines. Tube wells is given as uh, um, uh, triangles, springs, tanks, perennial, and dry. So the dotted is perennial and dry is a dot. So let's look at wells, which is um, um, lined and unlined, or tubers. Tubers is good. So let's go uh, and the tanks. Okay. So I'm going to, for this, we need to create a new shape file because we don't have a shape file for this uh, image. For example, if you go here and look at the pro uh, properties, okay, it is just an image. You don't see uh, other data here. Okay, there's no attributes associated uh, and there is no pixel value. For example, if I click on this pixel uh, for the India full states, there's some data, but here it's just bands. Band one, band two, band three, and what is the color of the band? Hmm? Because it's purely a color. There's no data as such uh, taken out. It is a information, an image. Okay, so we have just scanned, taken a scanned image. So let me um, go back and then clear the selection. Okay, so I have this, okay. And then now I will close this window so that we have more estate to play with and here. Okay, so I'm going to just for the time sake um, and, and looking at the data, we will look at these tube wells in this um, area, this village area, or we can even go up in the northern part where there's more and more lakes and 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 um, uh, tubers right so the tubers is what we are going to use okay we are going to uh, use uh, tubers uh, for this uh, sake so what we will do here is we have seen uh, multiple um, legends, but we are going to only use tubers. So I'm going to come down and then go to the same location where we had tubers, and then I'm zooming in, right? So here is where I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make a shape file. So now the first one we're going to make is points. So the points, how I'm going to make, you have these uh, plus mark in yellow. So you can hover your mouse on top of it. It says new shape file layer. So let's click that layer and then a new shape file uh, window opens up. It is opening up in a different um, window. So I'm going to close it again and open. Hopefully to see it open here. Yes, now it's opening uh, in your screen. Uh, now what we're going to do is we have to name it. So let's name it wells. Okay, so well locations, wells underscore tanks. Uh, for this geo location, but more details you have to give. But just for now, we'll say, okay, let's say even that B 43 R 12, which is the sheet number. Okay. File encoding is default is fine. The geometry type is points, multi point, or is it a line string polygon? So there's three types. Multi point is just more points per, per uh, entry. Uh, we don't want to do that for now because how many, how do you assemble five wells into one that you can have a village boundary. So I'm just going to click point. Uh, additional dimensions, nothing is needed. The default uh, coordinate system is the same as this coordinate system. So you can keep the same coordinate system. And now the table. So now I've created the file, but inside the file, I need columns. Okay. The default is the first column, which is saying that ID. 
ID is the number, serial number. So let it be default and we need name, right? You want to name the well, okay, well ID or something. Okay, so name could be underscore well ID or you can just say well ID, well ID, okay? And what type? Is it a text? Is it a whole number? Is it a decimal number or date? Since we know that we are going to label it, we are going to put a name. Suppose you're going to add a, a date of when you're going to collect the data, you can put the date there. For example, every well you go and measure the water level. So that it could be a numeric value, okay? Let's do that for the sake. Um, <clears throat> and then we say well ID and we have text is the thing. Length of the text is 80. There's no precision for text, so that is it. Yeah, and then you have to click this. So add fields to list. Now the field has been added. Okay, so one more, let's add diameter of the well in meters, underscore meters. Okay, yeah. It could be an open well, dug well, tube well, uh, that's fine, okay? And we know that it is not a text data, it is a number. We'll keep it whole number and there's no precision. If you do decimal number, then you have to say how many decimals uh, do you want? Let's keep decimals and two, okay? So then we have length is 10, not go more than that, and then you add. So we have three attributes in our, um, uh, attribute table and each feature will be now added okay so if you want to remove anything you can click remove now we are good to go so i'm going to say okay so now you see the uh, shape file already in my system so you could see it being populated in my uh, layer uh, file um, but if you right click and open it there's nothing there's no data on it okay again it's opening on a different window so please allow me to open it again It should come up. It's not coming up. So I'm going to do it again. So it's not allowing to open up. So let me reshare my screen. I'm going to um, stop share, new share, and then projected. OK, good. So now uh, I'm going to do this again. Go to here, right click. And then slowly open attribute table. It's not letting me show my attribute table, but I think I have another way. So I'm going to do a new share and then first my screen. Okay, so now it should be visible. Open attribute table, yes. So this happens normally when you have multiple screens. So that's another uh, trick in QGIS. If you have multiple screens and working as most GIS prof professionals work with, the table moves up and down, okay? So make sure you understand where the table is and sometimes it will be minimized and kept at the bottom, okay? So for, if, you, if, you, if you lose it, again, the best way is to open it again, you'll open it. And now you see that ID is there, well ID is there, diameter is there, but there is no, entry features are not there because we never input it now we're going to use the map the the paper map that we um, geo referenced into a geo geospatial data okay so we're going to input it now let's see how we're going to do it so i'm just going to keep it small so that you can see it here okay let's keep it this side okay and this is the part we're going to work on right so you will see this part also. So you have the two, two things coming here, right? Now you see this yellow pencil, it's called toggle, okay? So if you want to edit a table, you need to first turn it editable. If you don't turn it editable, it will not be edited. This is a protection in uh, QGIS to make sure that no one edits the uh, numbers without uh, permission. Let's say, for example, I'm opening the attribute table here. I have the shape length and shape area. So if I click and then type any numbers, it doesn't work because it has been locked. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is you have to unlock the table. So for that, you have to click this yellow pencil. I'm going to click it. 
now toggling toggling uh, toggle has been turned on now you could easily put down the well details so now you see here there is a well um what i'm going to do is we're going to go back here let's first uh, take out the toggling so no edit has been done so this is about awning and turning off the toggle uh, then you go back to toggle just this layer so you the pencil coming up once this pencil comes up you can see this getting populated because it's a point file there is a point uh, toggle that can come up okay so uh, we're going to look at this area as i mentioned uh, Shiva Kot, uh, Madagali, uh, Madina Girhali, etc. Um, and we're going to add. So if you open the attribute table for this, you see that it is empty. We didn't add any uh, details yet. So I'm just going to close it for now. And still the pencil symbol is on. And then I'm going to click the add point. You can add a feature point or you could move a feature point. But let's add for now. And then uh, I'm going to see this uh, Shiva Kot. Uh, well, so let's click it. Once you click the Shiva quote well, the small uh, table comes up. As I said, the ID, the ID is a default number. Let's put one for the Shiva quote. And then you have a well ID. Okay, the well ID we said name. You see, if you uh, type numbers also, uh, you can give numbers plus a name, but we can just give because we already gave a name. So let's type Shiva quote well. Okay. Well, Shiva quote one. So Shiva quote one is the well ID and the diameter in meter is two meters, uh, 2.1 meter, for example. And here, if you type uh, your uh, text, it doesn't work. So I'm now typing text. It doesn't work. It only takes numbers because we have declared it to be only numbers in the string. In the string, some numbers can be converted to string as a uh, value. It's not it's not going to add and delete, but here diameter can add. So now if I click OK and go back to your attribute table, you could see that the first entry has come up. Right. So the idea is to populate from the map a data. So now you can see that the point has also come up. So let's do another one here. I'm going to click. This is number two. And this is uh, Shiva quote second well. And maybe the diameter is 1.7 meters. Right. six meters let's say and then say okay so now you see a point there also to see the point better i'm just going to remove this image uh for now you could see the two points coming up right so those are the two wells that have been populated let's add one more here and this we can have this uh as uh three and then the name is mother giri ali just from the map Okay, and number one, and then the diameter is two, you can say, okay. So now we have added three points, right? So these three points are uh, very important to uh, look into the attribute table. And you can see in the attribute table, we have the three points as point files. If you click the pencil again, or save without saving, it will ask. See, we have edited the file. We have created a shape file. We have looked into the map and then say, okay, this is well I want, this is the well I want from 2011. Okay, so then you will shift it, shift the data into the table. That's what we have done. We have added the table, um, populated the table. We'll add one more just for the, the region. Okay, so let's say this one is another one. I'm going to give, click here. It says ID4, Mada Iri Hali, name two. Okay, so we have four uh, uh, wells done. Now you can go and see this has populated up. So it says save layer edits or stop editing. Okay, so if you want to save, you save, or you want to go back, you can go back. If you accidentally press this yellow button, which says stop the toggling, stop the editing, it will ask, do you want to save the edits or not? See if you can see it's asking, you want to save. So the first step you should do is always save your edits if you are okay with it. Now, if you have saved it, you can close the pencil. The pencil symbol goes off. You can go and open your attribute table. The table has been populated. So now if I click anything, now I'm typing and clicking, it doesn't change. Why? Because the toggle button is off. If I toggle it on again, 
see now I've uh, toggled it back on again. This this symbol comes up and this can be edited. Let's see. Let's show you for now. Uh, this this has been I, I accidentally deleted it. Okay. So oh, I made a mistake. How do I go back? Don't worry. If you press this toggle again, it will ask, do you want to save the changes? Say no, I don't want to save the changes. So discard and your name comes back again. Okay, so let's do this again. I'm going to say, I'm going to add um, a, a, a underscore uh, for two. And then I say save edits, it saves the edit. Okay, I toggle off the button, it's okay. But now if I toggle the button again, and then this goes off, so you will delete it, save it, and then close the pencil. So this is how you would create a point file in uh, QGIS and extract from the image, any image. So this is the same thing you'll do for drone image, uh, photograph image, uh, and this is uh, the image that you've taken from a paper map. First thing is to make sure the images are georeferenced. Most of the images are georeferenced, so you don't have to worry if it is from the drone or a, a GPS handheld camera, but scanned images like this needs to be georeferenced. Okay. So this is the first step. Uh, in the next step, let's look at a road. Okay, This uh, is a road as per the definition, the yellow lines I'm saying. Let's double confirm. Uh, these are the yellow lines with red boundaries. Um, it could be a different road um, altogether, but let's double check. Yes, here. Okay, so it says it is rows metal uh, according to importance. Okay, so if it is important rows, it's bigger. If it is less important, it's smaller. That's what it means. So we have three. So, but it's, it's still good for us. We are going to use it for our this region, Shiva code. Okay, so let's uh, now go to the next step of a shape file. What shape file do we need? We need a line shape file. And in the line shape file, again, you go here to the to the yellow button. You click the yellow button. And let's say we are going to say roads is the name of the file. And we're going to do the same thing, D43R12. Yeah. And then geometry type is line string. OK, it is a line, not a point. Uh, the coordinate system is the fine, it's the same thing. And ID number is already created. So what are we going to say? We're going to say road name, right? Road underscore name is one thing. It is a text data. There is no precision. Let's add it. Maybe one more thing we can say is road width. Okay. So this road width may not be available from the um, map. But when you're going in the physical uh, world and, and taking a measurement, you can do it. Since it's a number, I'm going to put decimal and then precision as again two. Let's say meters, road width underscore meters. Okay, there is a limit for the name length. So let's say road, uh, road underscore width because it's anyway it's a road the shape file is a road right in meters okay so we have added that layer now if we open the layer add a new field so you can see that uh, you can have a new toggle columns add feature Okay, so add feature comes only when you add the pencil uh, thing, uh, and the add feature it can also be a value that you can put. Okay, so the best way is here. So you have a new field which turns on because of the pencil, or you can delete a field. So, as I said, the new field is road width. I want it to be with meters. You can add a comment about the field, like uh, what is it? Okay, measurement of the road. And then you say it is going to be a decimal and it is going to be six and two, right? Then you click okay. Now it has been created. Now I'm going to close this, but not save it. Why? Because we're going to do the add features now. So you can add features in two ways. If you go to this layer again, open attribute table, I can add it physically, physically, ID, name and stuff. 
but it still needs a location, right? So for the location, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first save my edits and toggle off so there's no value. Now I'm going to toggle it on again, the pencil is on and I'm going to draw. So now you could see that this line tool has come up, uh, add line feature. So I'm going to click it and then say, this is one road. You could see that I am drawing um, and the line is retracing this. So I'm just going to click here. When you're done, right click, this thing will come up to say, which is the ID. So the ID is number one. The road name is Shiva Port Main. And then the width is, let's say, uh, five meters. Okay. And I say, okay. Now, if I go to the attribute table, you will see the first legend put in. So let's add four more like we have done in the past. So this is one road uh, which has come up to here. And then I'm going to uh, click another road. And then I'm going to say two ID. Shiva port uh, two, and then with is it's smaller than the other one, let's say three meters and say, okay, I can't see it properly. So what you could do is also right click, go to properties uh, and make the line thicker. Okay, so the line color could be uh, somewhat red or this color so that the map can also see uh, and then you can close it. Okay, so I'll just say, okay. Uh, and the width is too small. Let's make it one uh, and then apply and say, okay, now you could see the line coming up big, correct? Uh, I want to see the line, otherwise uh, maybe in, in the screen, it will, not, it will not be visible. Good, we have done two. Uh, let's do uh, two more on this side. So until here, I have drawn the road and this is a bridge. So let's leave the bridge and then let's draw this road. So I'm just going to click, right click, uh, first left click and click on the buttons. And then right click it, it'll open the feature ID name. And this is going to be Madagiri Halli 1. Okay, and this is thicker road. So let's say four meters and say okay. And now you see the line has come up. Just to show how the line has come up, I'm going to take it off. And you can see that three lines have already been come up. Now I'm going to finish it off with this line uh, kind of connecting it to a house. Uh, so one, two, three and then right click it becomes four mother giri Halli two and it's a small road let's say one meters very, very small and it's done okay so now we have populated a uh, line a point uh, and the last one is a polygon uh, i will uh, do the polygon in the next lecture uh, uh, but before that we have to save it so let's uh, save the edits I'm going to click save edits and then turn off the pencil. And now you could see the pencil is uh, gone. These two have each have four, four data. So you can see four data. Uh, the first one is not okay. We need to de delete it because I typed it and then it didn't work. Uh, sometimes it gets stuck. So don't worry, just close and do it again. It will work. Let's delete this entry. So you see, I have clicked it and then it says you can delete a field. This is a delete a field. Uh, or you can delete an ID, okay? So um, let's do this. Yeah. And then you can see delete, correct? So there is a delete selected features. I'll say delete. I just need four. Uh, there's only four values. So what it also means is that uh, you have one, two, three, four. Also means is that you cannot just um, create a value um in the attribute table you need data for it but still because you put uh, the the toggle switch on it will still look at the value the interesting part is even without a geospatial location uh, it will still exist okay i'll show you how okay so you have this now you have again let's open it first let's close the toggle now i'm going to open it the first id is gone because we deleted it we have four right so i'm going to click it and then um we're going to add one more feature, okay? So uh, you can go here and add a feature. So let's say I've added it. Let's say I have feature ID five, uh, X, Y, Z is the name, and then one uh, width is there. I can close it, but 
if you look at the row, there's only be four because there is no spatial location for this. Okay, so I'm just going to close it and then close, close it just to show you there's no pencil. So there's no editing now possible. I open it and you have the fifth one. But where is the fifth one? Right? So if, if you if you zoom in to see the fifth one, you will not see. I'm going to show you something um, uh, just to take out the image. Uh, okay, and then we have the attribute table, right? So now if I click this, you see it's coming yellow. If I click this, this comes yellow, right? This is the third entry, this becomes yellow, and then fourth entry becomes yellow. But the fifth entry, which was initially not drawn for this, because there's only one, two, three, and four, it will retrace it, right? So what it does is, it retraces the last entry and or it doesn't have an entry. So there is no entry for it. Uh, unless and otherwise you give an entry, it will not come yellow. Okay, so you have one first row, second two row, third is the third row, and fourth is this load, and five, there is no road. So it is an error. And this is how you should also clean uh, attribute tables if needed. So I'm going to open it, open the pencil, click on delete, delete that row, save, save button, toggle off, and then I close. Okay, I'll add the layers back. As I said, we will uh, stop here and then do the other part, which is the polygon in the next class, and then apply it on the model. Thank you. Thank you.